Hello, everyone. Good afternoon or good evening if you're watching us from uh, Europe. My name is Svetelina and today with Jenna from British Council US, we have the pleasure to moderate this webinar on UK universities. We are welcoming three wonderful presenters from three amazing institutions from really different sides of the, of the UK. Today we have University of Manchester with Raluca, University of Strathclyde with Melissa, and Nerissa introducing University of Wolverhampton. How will today's webinar go? We will start with a general presentation on studying in the UK um, brought to us by Jenna and British Council, and then each university will introduce their institution. You probably have already seen some reminders from me, so you know that we're very personally approaching you. So we would really like to help you today. So do ask us all your questions in the chat to your right hand side. I always have to think because it's reversed for you. So you're probably seeing the chat already. Do let us know where you're uh, watching us from and uh, what are your questions to the three presenters today. And we will get back to you at the end of the session. So without further ado, I would like to ask Jenna to take my seat and let you know why the UK would be the best choice for you. Welcome, Jenna, and wel welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much, Lena, and hi, everybody. Um, it's so great to be here tonight, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Um, I see we have some people writing in the chat where they're joining us from. So if it's afternoon or evening, um, we look forward to spending the next hour here with you to talk about studying in the UK, um, how to apply, and you'll get to hear from three university representatives um, tonight. Uh, like Lena said, my name is Jenna Hartzell. I'm the education manager at the British Council uh, based in Washington, D.C., and uh, the British Council is the UK's organization for cultural relations and education, um, which includes promoting opportunities for students to study in the UK. And I'm going to give a brief presentation about studying in the UK and how to apply, and then I'll turn it over to our university presenters. Um, so here's a map of the UK. So when we're talking about the United Kingdom, um, we are talking about Scotland, Northern Ireland, England, and Wales. And as you can see from the number in the top right corner, um, the UK is one of the top destinations for international students in the whole world. The UK hosts close to 500,000 international students. I wanted to share some of the top reasons why international students choose to study in the UK. Um, and you can see some of those listed here. I think a, um, one of the top reasons is that the UK's world famous higher education system has over 160 different uh, institutions for you to choose from with a diverse range of universities um, that range from ancient institutions to more modern universities, uh, universities that are based in a city campus or um, in a charming uh, town or in the beautiful countryside. So you can really find a UK university um, that fits you perfectly. The UK also has a global reputation for quality assured education. All universities and colleges in the UK are strictly regulated by the UK government, which means that um, you can be assured that you're receiving the highest quality um, teaching support and resources available. The UK style of teaching is also something that I always want to highlight when we talk about studying in the UK. Um, in the UK, students are taught by world leading research active academics, which ensures that your learning will be current and internationally relevant. The academic culture is also self-directed. So as a student, you'll learn how to conduct independent research and how to think independently and critically. Um, but at the same time, you have access to comprehensive student support services. So although you will be learning how to become an independent um, thinker, you'll be very well supported in that journey. Students also have a huge range of choices when it comes to studying in the UK with over 50,000 different undergraduate courses offered. Um, these include courses that have a year long work placement or study abroad experience included. 
and students have the opportunity to really specialize at the undergraduate level, which we'll talk about in a little bit, a little bit more. Uh, going to the UK for university can also be a great value in terms of affordability compared to other countries um, such as the US. And the global education experience um, that UK universities provide is an amazing opportunity for students to become global citizens. UK universities have some of the most international student body populations in the entire world, and that diversity is also reflected in the academic staff. So students will be exposed to perspectives from all around the world. And since the UK has such a long tradition of hosting international students, and because they host so many international students, they have robust international student support services. So you can be confident that you'll be um, taken care of by an expert team from the universities um, as you apply and then also while you're at university. Um, so I did want to cover just a couple of vocabulary um, that we might use during this presentation that might be different from the vocabulary um, from your country when talking about universities. So when we talk about a course um, in the UK, we're talking about um, at least what we call here in the US a major, or it would be the subject that you're studying. So for example, it might be a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering or a Bachelor of Arts in um, American History, for example. So that's what we mean when we're talking about a course. If you hear the word module mentioned, that just means a class um, that you would take at university. And when we talk about qualifications, those are the different criteria um, that universities will accept um, for you to, to apply and be accepted on a course. So for example, that might include your high school grades and your GPA, it could include standardized test scores. And I do want to say universities um, they accept um, standardized tests and curriculum from all around the world. So you can go to their website and go to the course, um, course site that you're interested in and find the specific qualifications that they accept um, for that. And when we talk about accommodation, it's just a different word for housing or student housing. So those would be on the dorms, for example, that you would live in while at university. Um, so I do want to point out that most of what I talk about um, is general to the entire UK, but one key difference um, is the length of degrees. So in England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, undergraduate degrees are typically three years, unless a student chooses a program with an additional study abroad or work placement year. Um, but you can think just in general, when you're looking at England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, that the undergraduate degrees will be three years as a standard. When you're looking at uh, co undergraduate courses in Scotland, those degrees will typically be four years. And often, if you're interested in a study abroad opportunity, that might take place in the third year. Um, so that's a, a key difference to keep in mind. Um, regardless of where you apply in the UK, you will be applying directly to your course or to your major. So unlike the US where you can apply to a university, um, we say undecided, in the UK you would apply directly to, for example, your Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering or Bachelor of Arts in American History. So. Um, that is something that you'll have to think about and um, reflect upon before um, applying to your universities, which course you'll be applying to. And in, in the UK, there are also no general education requirements like there are in the US. So your degrees will be very focused and specialized. Um, so for example, in the three-year degrees that you'll find in England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, your classes will be very focused on your course of choice. Although you will have some electives to choose from, um, it, 
the entire um, degree will be very focused on whatever subject you choose to study. And um, in, in the four-year degrees in Scotland, um, you can choose to study up to two other subjects um, beside the one that you apply for for your first two years of your degree before specializing in the final two years, which allows for a little more flexibility um, to explore different subjects. Um, so students really can find the best option which works best for them and what they want to study. And tonight we have uh, universities based both um, in England and in Scotland, um, so they can help to answer um, any questions about the difference in how those degrees work. Um, so UCAS is, um, UCAS is your friend when you're applying to university in the UK. Um, UCAS stands for the Universities and Colleges Admission Service, and it is your one-stop shop, um, as we say in the US, to search for a course at a university and find the information about, for example, all the qualifications you'll need to apply to that course. Um, and then you'll also be applying to UK universities through UCAS. So, um, and UCAS has a ton of useful resources and information for students. So um, it's an incredibly um, rich website and we recommend checking it out um, if you're starting to consider studying in the UK. So like I mentioned, UCAS course search is the search engine where you can find details about every course offered in the UK Every UK university is on there. And UCAS apply is where students can apply. Um, and you can apply to up to five different courses. So those are typically at five different universities. You can see on the slide, there are some um, choice restrictions. So if you're looking to apply to Oxford or Cambridge, you will have to choose one or the other. And if you are looking to apply to medicine, veterinary medicine or science or dentistry, then you will have a maximum of four applications to those courses. Um, and the fifth will have to be a course outside of those fields. Um, and there's a very um, simple application cost. So if you're applying to one course, you'll have a 20 pound fee. And um, if you're applying to more than one course, then it will be uh, 25 pounds. Um, so, in terms of qualifications, like I mentioned, this just refers to um, the entry requirements for the course that you're looking at, what the universities are looking for from you. Um, so, this is kind of an example based on what might be asked for from a U.S. student um, looking at high school diploma, advanced coursework such as AP tests or IB diploma. Um, looking at the ACT, SAT, or SAT subject tests. And a lot of universities, when you go on to look at their requirements, they may accept combinations of these different qualifications. So it's definitely worth checking out on the specific course websites to see what um, they will offer, um, or I'm sorry, what they will accept in terms of a qualification. And then if you're applying for a more creative course, there might be auditions or portfolios involved. Um, there are rarely interviews or entrance tests required, but depending on the course you're applying to, those might be required. So again, um, we definitely recommend checking out those course specific web pages for all of that um, specific information. Um, so the 2021 timeline, I won't spend too much time on this um, because I'll be handing it over to our university presenter shortly, um, but you can find this on the UCAS website. Um, and just to note that there is an earlier deadline for courses in medicine, veterinary medicine and science and dentistry. And also if you're applying at Oxford or Cambridge, um, that will be an October 15th deadline. And the, general deadline for all other undergraduate courses is January 15th, although um, many universities will also accept applications after that date. Um, and we know that it's a um, sort of a topsy-turvy world for all of us right now, um, and we just want to assure you that in addition to students' academic well-being, the UK government and UK universities are treating the safety and security of students as their top priority. Um, 
universities are accepting um, applications um, or will be accepting applications for the 2021 application cycle that launched in May um, and you'll be able to start submitting applications as um, early as September. But like I mentioned, those those deadlines are um, a little bit later in October and in January. And um, the UK universities plans for delivery of programs in 2020 are being announced. So I would encourage you to um, check out the any specific universities you're interested in. Um, many are announcing that they'll have a blended delivery approach or students may be able to start online and then switch to in person. So um, just an update for everyone on that. And then also with travel restrictions and quarantine restrictions, those are continuously being reviewed and updated in the UK. So um, we do recommend um, on our British Council Study UK website, we have a tab for COVID-19 updates. So I do recommend you to check there um, to keep up to date on those developments. And I also recommend that you check out the hashtag we are together campaign, um, which illustrates um, how universities and students have come together um, during this time in, in the UK. Um, these are some resources, which I know um, SRT will be sharing the slides, so I won't go too um, much into these, but just some linked resources for you to check out. Um, and with that, I will hand it over to Raluca Fasari from the University of Manchester, and I'll be back um, during the Q&A at the end of the presentation. It's time to stellify, be the focus, be the be the vision, be the brightest, the universe, be the future, be driven. There's half a million alumni in 190 countries across the globe, over 25 Nobel laureates. This is our genetic code. There's stardust in your DNA. You are a meteorite. You are the pen tempt in words. You're the lens sensing light. Be 10,000 degrees. Be light years, travel in time. Be the star of the universe and shine, shine, shine. Be the star you are searching for. Illuminate the night. Be the success that you wish for and be quicker, be faster, be bright. And as the future dawns, you'll get brighter by the day. It's time to let the sun shine through. You star, light the way. Make all the difference in every single thing you do. Stellify. It means to turn into a star, and the star that turns, it's you. I'm Raluca. I'm here from the University of Manchester. I'm hoping everybody can hear me and see me. And um, I'll be going through a short presentation about the university. And then hopefully um, you have loads and loads of questions for me and for my colleagues as well, presenting from the other two universities joining us today. So um, just to start with, um, the University of Manchester is the largest campus based university in the UK. Um, we are the home of over 40,000 students and um, we ha offer courses across undergraduate, postgraduate, research, PhD and postdoctoral options as well. The University of Manchester was home to 25 Nobel Prize winners and uh, still is home to two of them who are currently teaching on graphene application. So for all of you out there thinking about studying potentially chemistry or physics or are interested in the STEM field, 
you can be sure that you have wonderful people looking after you and teaching you. Very similarly, as a comprehensive university, we have courses across multiple disciplines, including humanities and social sciences, where we think we're just as great as we are ranked 27th in the world, according to the 2020 global rankings. As a university and as a large university located in Manchester, social responsibility is very important for us, which is why um, when it came to the fight against COVID-19, the university through its medical school and medical research has tried to provide as much support as possible to the NHS, which is the National Health Service in the UK, but also to inform public policy when it came to managing the crisis. So, in terms of Manchester as a city, Manchester is the second largest city in the UK after London. It's a very modern city. It's quite an industrial city as well. And it's also what we like to think of Britain's most popular student city. Um, in terms of the University of Manchester, we have had one of the largest investments when it comes to higher education and in, in the UK. It's over one billion pounds that has been invested in our campus master plan to extend in order to be able to accommodate more students and more facilities. Manchester has been the home of the Industrial Revolution. It's also where vegetarianism was started. Um, and we like to think of ourselves as being very lively and very diverse um, as a city, but also as a university. So, as I mentioned before, um, we are the largest campus based university in the UK. However, one of the things that's great about the University of Manchester is the fact that you get the best of both worlds. So, the university is a campus. However, we're based very close to Manchester city centre. So, you do get the best of both worlds. You have the advantage of being in a campus environment. You have the advantage of um, campus based accommodation, all the buildings in the the same place. However, in a short 10, 15 minute walk, you'd be in Manchester city centre being able to take advantage of everything else that Manchester has to offer. One of the things that we're also very, very proud of is our employability and the focus that we place on employability for our students and for our graduates. We've been the Times and the Sunday Times University of the Year for graduate employment. And we've also consistently been voted the most targeted university in the UK by um, UK employers and top 100 graduate employers. When it comes to the University of Manchester, we want to make sure that if you do study a degree with us, then we are going to set you up for a wonderful career moving forward, whether you choose to join research, whether you choose to look towards other companies, then you would have wonderful and great opportunities. Um, you can see on the screen a few examples of companies that tend to recruit from the University of Manchester, with some of them being based actually in Manchester. So the BBC is based here, ITV as well, but some of the more internationally recognized companies also have headquarters in Manchester. Um, in terms of what the university offers, um, as Jenna mentioned in the beginning, you do have options when it comes to the degrees that you can study, including being able to have a sandwich year as part of your degree. So a lot of our STEM degrees have those um, industry years integrated and mandatory, and then others, our social sciences, our business degrees, our humanities degrees as well, um, offer the option to be added later on or as part of your application process. What that means is that the university will help you and support you through guidance, um, through one-to-one -one help, through career advice. Um, they're there for you to have interview simulations if you need to, resume or CV support, and basically do whatever they can to help you um, secure a great career, whether that's because you chose to do an internship in Manchester or abroad even, or whether you want to um, have a wonderful graduate career, then that's what our services do there. Um, some of our, of our more interesting options are for our medical school, where students can spend um, a year with, in an internship um, at a clinic in the US. So if you are thinking about, if you're a US student and you're thinking having that work experience back home, then you do have that option. So it's, it's an interesting program with the Mayo Clinic. So that's something that we're very, very proud of as well. Um, I will have a short video for you before we kind of launch into talking a little bit about um, your social life and activities, um, and then I'll, um, I'll carry on with the presentation.
when it comes to the University of Manchester and in general UK universities, the student social life and also their experiences at university are helped by and in some ways managed by a student's union. The University of Manchester has the largest students union in the UK and we're the home of over 350 clubs and societies. It ranges from activities from things like archery and lacrosse to things like the pillow fighting society and the poetry reading society. So you have as many options as you want to join and practice your hobbies, make friends, meet people. We're a very internationally diverse university. So when you do come on campus, you'll probably find loads of cultural societies, loads of new cultures blending. One of my favorite things is the International Week at university, which also means that cultural societies have um, an International Food Day, at least, so you can try all sorts of wonderful and amazing things from around the world. Outside of that, one of the key points about joining clubs and societies and one of the key points about the Students' Union is that there are no prerequisites to joining any activities that you're interested in. Starting with the Freshers' Week, which is your first week when you arrive at university, you can sign up to any activity that you want to try, anything that you think you might be interested in, and there's no necessary commitment that you have to have towards those activities in the sense that if you've been to a club meeting and you think, that's not really for me, then that's perfectly fine. You don't have to carry on with that activity. If you find something that you think that would be really interesting and I really want to get involved with, but I don't have any experience, that's not a problem either because you can join and there will be other people there to support you and help you throughout your experience at Manchester. Outside of that, something that we do try as much as possible as a university together with our students union is to offer projects that students can get involved with, whether you choose to support a particular charity, whether you want to do fundraising, whether you want to get involved in a cultural project, or if you want to volunteer for a particular community organization, those are all open to you and available to you through the university and through our students union. And that's what they're there for, to support you and make your experience at university wonderful, while in the same time making sure that you are able to focus on your studies and excel at your degree whilst you're studying at the University of Manchester. In terms of accommodation, which I know is a very important point for our international students, um, as a university, we are able to guarantee accommodation to our international students in the first year, but also for the duration of their degree. So should you choose to stay in university residences for the entire duration of your degree, then you absolutely can do that as an international student. Um, in terms of our accommodation, it is around the campus area, so you are not very far away. We have a lot of sports facilities and pastoral support from our uh, residence leaders. Um, we organize loads of welcome events. We have um, uh, sometimes we also have competitions between our accommodation blocks, which is quite fun to participate in. And we also offer the option of catered halls for those students who are a little bit more concerned about the self catered aspect of um, accommodation at university. So it's something to keep in mind, especially if you're considering um, Joining the University of Manchester, typically most students spend their first year within the university halls of residence, which is not mandatory at all, but it is a good experience. It helps introduce you to the university. As a large institution, it can be a little bit scary in the beginning because there's loads of people, loads of things happening all the time. So you might want to try living on campus for your first year. After first year, usually students tend to move out. Manchester has a lot of great options for private accommodation. And our students union has its own version of a letting agency, which is there to support students trying to find accommodation off campus should they choose to. As I said, for international students, you do have the ability to stay on campus for the duration of your degree if you if you want to do that. Um, one of the key points about Manchester, and I hope you kind of noticed that in, in the video that introduced the university, is that we are a large university, but that also means that we have loads of students from all over the world who afterwards turn into our alumni network. And we have a very wonderful and supportive alumni network um, that's helping the university and also is there to offer mentorship for students, whether you're interested in speaking to alum alumni from your own country, maybe you're interested in speaking with alumni from different countries that you're targeting that you might be considering as part of your career, they're there to support as a network. 
Um, they're, as I mentioned, for our alumni, they, um, they are quite involved when it comes to the University of Manchester. Some of them have put together various funds. One of the ones that we're very proud of is our North America um, Alumni Network and their scholarship, which is merit, and also they offer a scholarship that's application based for our students from North America. So it's a, it's a very good thing that we have our alumni community as involved. Another key point, especially for our US student guests here, um, the University of Manchester is recognized by FAFSA, which means that you can use your federal student loans to come to the university. Um, it will help offset if you use a combination of student loans and parent loans, it will probably offset the cost of your tuition fee. With Manchester, our tuition fees vary depending on the program that you're looking at with a range between um, 18,000 pounds for our humanities degrees to 23,000 pounds for our STEM degrees and also 34,000 pounds for our medical school. So um, you do have a few options. The university recognizes various sources of funding if you want to use them for your um, university degree to fund your education. Um, and if you need any help with that, we have a dedicated funding team that's there to help you. Um, I will end here so I can pass it on to, to my colleague. Um, but if you have any questions, you have my details there and my colleagues as well. And I'm sure that our lovely colleagues from, from SRT will be passing those contact details on. So um, I will leave it with you here. And I would like to introduce my wonderful colleague, Melissa, who will be talking to you about University of Strathclyde. So thank you very much. Now is a pleasure. Now is a place where hope calls home. Now is compassion and freedom to roam. Now builds bridges, now breaks down walls. Now is new thinking, now gives its all. Now is the heart, the soul and the head. Now is the town you'll want to paint red. Now makes the future, now bangs the drum. Now is the welcome for all those who come. Now is silence and breathtaking sights. Now bucks the trend. Now fights for rights. Now is new jobs. Now inspires youth. Now faces up to an inconvenient truth. Now more than ever is what the world needs. Now is the hope that our country feeds. There is no waiting. Scotland is now. Hi everyone, hello there. I hope you all enjoyed that, um, that little clip just about Scotland. My name is Melissa Cunningham and I'm here from the University of Strathclyde in Glasgow. My thanks to Raluca for that wonderful presentation about Manchester. Um, so Glasgow is only three hours train journey from Manchester. So you and your students, I'm sure, can, um, can take a, a good trip to the UK. Um, I will be introducing the University of Strathclyde. So within my presentation, I'll chat to you a little bit about the city of Glasgow, um, some information about Strathclyde, for those of you that aren't too aware of our university, and I'll talk about our four faculties and the subjects that we have within, as well as, um, as all of our facilities that we have um, in sports clubs and our admissions process as well. So here in the first slide then is the, the university, um, which is situated in downtown Glasgow. And Glasgow is the biggest city in Scotland. We're about a 45 minute bus or train ride from the capital, Edinburgh. And we're one of the biggest cities in the UK. There's lots to do. It's actually a really big um, student city. We have six universities situated in and around Glasgow. So there is a big student community of over 170,000. There's lots there to do, and I'm sure you and your students will find lots to do within arts, culture, music. You can see here from the slide that we are recognised by UNESCO as the city of music. We have um, just over 100 different gigs and concerts per week in Glasgow. So whatever you're, you're into, whether that's jazz or rock, classical music, big events, something underground, there, there is something for everyone. For those of you that I hope have been to Scotland, I hope that you, you have um, 
you will agree that we are quite a friendly bunch. And this has been recognised by Rough Guides as well. We are noted as being um, the friendliest city in the world. We love to, to welcome international students and visitors each year. And as I mentioned before, it's very easy to get to, to get to Glasgow. We have two international airports and we're only a one hour flight away from London. So very easy flight connections, very easy domestic connections by, um, by bus or train as well. And again, just um, some events that have taken place in Glasgow. Lots of um, different types of sports events like the Athletics Championships last year. A couple of years ago, we were joint host to the European Championships um, as well as the Commonwealth Games. So there's been a, a lot of investment over the years into developing um, new facilities in Glasgow, which is why we were selected to host these big events, which is great. So it's great for you and great for students um, to go and, and visit um, these events and have a good time there. Also different festivals as well in terms of arts and culture. We have the Merchant City Festival taking place every summer. We have the Celtic Connections, which takes place at the start of the year in January. Um, just alluding to our heritage, lots of different, um, different bands come from all over the world for Celtic Connections. It's a really popular festival. And of course, it wouldn't be Scotland without piping, of course, and bagpipers. We are, of course, host to the World Piping Championships during the summer. So that's always really nice in Glasgow. You can hear lots of bagpipers um, who come all over the world to descend in Glasgow and you can hear them um, during one weekend in Glasgow. It gets quite noisy, but it's good fun. So the University of, of Strathclyde here, we are situated in downtown area, a little bit like Manchester as well. It's very easy to get into the, the heart of the city centre from the campus. It only takes about a 10 minute walk to get to the, the main train station, the main bus station and, um, and the shops and amenities as well. Just to go back very quickly as well to the slide here, we are a self-contained campus. So everything that you can see here um, is within, is contained. It takes about 10, 15 minutes just to get from one end of the campus to the other as well. So it's really convenient for students to get around. Just some information then about the University of, of Strathclyde. We are known as the place of useful learning. We were founded during what's called the Scottish Enlightenment in 1796. And we have a rich history of teaching and innovation. We were actually founded by a teacher, Professor John Anderson, and who really wanted a place of learning in which to, to give back to society. And this really stands um, in the heart of Strathclyde and our ethos. We're home to, to um, a student population of 23,000 students from over 100 countries, so very international student population at Strathclyde. QS is rated as a five star in all areas, such as teaching and innovation. We have really good, strong industry links, which I'll touch upon a little bit later as well. We are proud to have won um, the Times Higher Education UK University of the Year in 2019. And we actually won this award back in 2012 as well. So this is a really, a really big deal for us, a really great accolade for Strathclyde as we are, we're the first university in the UK to have won this award twice. So we're really, really proud to be recognised by Times Higher Education. As well as that, we were winner of the Queen's Anniversary Prize for Innovation and Energy Research. And the Queen's Anniversary Prize is a really prestigious prize which is awarded every two years to UK universities that are deemed to be um, really high in, in certain areas. And certainly our, our teaching and um, our, our energy and innovation has been deemed that. At Strathclyde, we welcome a number of US students each year for undergraduate, for postgraduate masters and for research. We generally have over 100 US students come and study with us each year and it is increasing year on year, which is great to see. We have a lot of partnerships in the US as well. We are host to the Fulbright Summer School each year. 
And uh, some of our own Scottish students each year get to go to NASA, which is really exciting. They take part in the Scottish Space School, so they, they get a really good opportunity to do that and to, to spend some time in the US. As well as that, in terms of our research links, our Centre for Health Policy within research has some, some strategic partnerships with NYU and with Yale. And we also have a joint master's with Carnegie Mellon as well, which we're, we're really excited about. And a lot of our students can take placements within um, that master's too. Bearing in mind as well in the UK, it's, it's, um, it's a one year for master's. We also have developed over the past few years a couple of summer schools within each faculty. So more and more of our international students, including US students, are coming over during the summer to take some different classes and modules and just to get a little bit of a taster about what Strathclyde is all about. So a little bit about undergraduate study. Now, I know that Jenna has, um, has touched upon this in terms of the, the flexibility and, and breadth of study, which I'll, I'll touch upon um, when it refers to Strathclyde. But we do offer at Strathclyde over 200 degree courses and a great deal of flexibility within those. This is over for faculties of business, humanities and social sciences, engineering and sciences. In Scotland, it's worth bearing in mind that typically a bachelor's degree is four years in duration. And at Strathclyde, but also other Scottish universities, undergraduate students can come and do an integrated master's. So essentially a four plus one. So in five years, they'll have their undergraduate and their master's degree as well. And that's typically within science and engineering. So just a little bit very quickly about the four faculties that we have at Strathclyde our Strathclyde Business School. It was voted UK Business School of the Year in 2016. Very prestigious and very well known in Europe. It has triple accreditation, so you can be assured that uh, a Strathclyde Business degree is recognised everywhere. There is a lot of flexibility within the business degree course at undergraduate level. In the first year of study, students can choose up to five subjects and they can, can, can combine some of these subjects with subjects and other faculties as well. It's only after second year that stu students decide what they want to major in. So even students who maybe haven't studied a certain, um, a certain subject, for instance, economics at high school, they can come and choose that in their first year of study. Our business school has strong industry links, Glasgow being a big city. It does welcome a lot of different organizations and Glasgow was quite an industrial city as well. Um, a lot of steel works in Glasgow once upon a time. So we do have that connection there and students can avail of our industry links and partnerships as well in terms of um, gaining placements. We have a, a very specific management development programme within our business school, which is supported by employers such as Deloitte, Procter & Gamble, Ernst & Young. Um, and these, um, these industry partners come in and speak to students and we'll work on project, projects with students as well. So it's great for students to get that real practical work and experience. Some of our rankings as well, you'll see that we are very high up in the rankings for a lot of our subjects within the business school, such as accounting, for instance, and marketing. So our second faculty, the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences, Again, a lot of flexibility here. Students enter into the first year and they can choose up to three different subjects. In the second year, this is whittled down to two subjects and it's only after second year students decide what they want to major in. So again, getting that real flexibility, choosing different subjects that you maybe have never studied before. Um, and it's just, a, it's just a great way to delve into something a bit different, quite exciting. Some subjects that students that are popular amongst our US students are English and creative writing, journalism, media and communications, international relations and psychology and social policy. We are also home to our law clinic as well. And we have, um, we have st our student lawyers who, um, who advise people within the community, again, reaching to that Strathclyde ethos. They advise those in the community and give legal aid. So it gives 
um, a real sense of community, but it's also great experience for students to get a feel for what, um, what practicing law would be like later on. Some of our rankings, again, I won't go through them all, but you can see that we are of high standing in a lot of our subject areas. And then our Faculty of Science. So we have four year BSc Bachelor of Science degrees and we have some five year integrated MSci courses as well. You can specialise in, in all different courses in science from immunology to pharmacology. And we have a lot of research centres such as the Fraunhofer Research Centre based at the university. We also have our chemistry clinic which is led by students um, and academics advise on this as well. So this is something that is really good for the community to avail of these services. And our students also work with, with entrepreneurs um, and brand new ideas. So again, it really gives students a great sense of that practical experience that they can take into the workplace and put in their resume for later on. We have lots of opportunities as well within science to undertake a, a semester or one year study abroad. And there are also opportunities for practical placements as well. And again, Glasgow being a really big city um, the, uh, with lots of research centres, lots of hospitals, there are lots of different areas in which students can find placement opportunities within our, our science subjects. And finally, our Faculty of Engineering, which is the biggest faculty of engineering out of all the Scottish universities. Again, we offer four year BEng degrees or five year integrated masters. We have a lot of traditional engineering programmes that you would expect, such as mechanical, civil electrical engineering, for instance. But we do offer some really specialist engineering programmes, such as aeromechanical, architecture, ocean marine and, um, and biomedical engineering. And you can see here as well, we're top 10 for many of these areas, which we're really proud of. Again, lots of different opportunities for students to, um, to work on practical experience, to work in placements as well. We have really good industry links, um, some of which are listed here as well, such as with Rolls-Royce, Boeing, Airbus, et cetera. So the application process is um, you can apply through UCAS. Strathclyde has recently set up their, their own direct system as well. So you can apply online or you can go through UCAS. Test scores can be sent through the college board um, straight through to Strathclyde and our entry requirements as well. I note that I have not included the IB, but the IB does differ per um, per degree programme. So typically our IBs um, would be roughly 30 to maybe 36. But if there are specific degree programmes that you are interested in, you can ask me in the chat and I can double check that for you. Very quickly as well, just on to our fees, but you can see here the range of our fees. It does differ again per faculty, but our undergraduate degree courses for one year are typically between 15 to 21,000 pounds. And we do have scholarships available as well. These amounts range from two to 5,000 pounds, depending on the faculty. Um, and we do accept FAFSA loans as well as the GI Bill and Sally May. Glasgow is quite a cheap um, city in which to live compared to other cities in the UK. And you can see here as well, we've, we give a rough estimation of how much it would be to, to live in the city with your, your rent and your food and cost for socialising, everything like that taken into consideration. So it is quite a good, um, a good option for you if you, are, um, if you are a little bit budget conscious. We do have housing that is available on campus and it's apartment style living. So you would um, you would share facilities, share bathroom and kitchen and living room facilities with other students, but you would have your own private bedroom. And housing is situated right in the heart of uh, the Strathclyde University as well. So you don't have to go too far to get to your lectures and classes. 
Our housing also, within the rent, it also includes access to Strathclyde Sport, which was just open last uh, a couple of years ago. It's a new state-of-the-art facility. £31 million was invested into building this facility, and it's great for students to get involved in as well. There are different exercise classes, there's a 25-metre swimming pool, and our sports union is based within Strathclyde Sports as well. So there are over 50 different sports clubs and teams to get involved in. So keeping fit and healthy in body and in mind as well. And we call it Strath Life. So our, our life outside of academics, there's lots and lots to get involved in. We, we do offer student support for all of our students. Um, we do offer maths and study skills workshops. We offer international specific student support, student counselling and wellbeing, and a career service as well. So students can avail of one-on-one um, -on -one advice in terms of their resume, in terms of job applications. There are also, if there are also part-time working opportunities as well, this is posted within the career service, and also some um, recruitment fairs as well over the year are organised by the Career Service. So again, it's really good to check on that website to check out the Career Service. And also graduates can avail of these services up to five years with a, um, within the time that they've graduated as well. And a bit about Strath Life. So our, our student union, they are host to our clubs and societies. There are loads of different things that you can join lots of different social and cultural events that you can get involved in and our international society as well is very popular with international students. They organise um, different tours within Scotland within the first couple of weeks, they organise different events and trips away. So it's great just to meet different students from all over the world there. I've included some of my contact details, but also if you have any questions later on, please feel free to post those in the chat. And I know that um, colleagues at SRT will be circulating this presentation later on. So thanks very much for listening. And I'll pass you now to my colleague Nerissa Anwar from the University of Wolverhampton. University is a big choice. Let's make it easy for you. We're going to tell you what makes Wolverhampton so special. Six things in 60 seconds. Let's go. At Wolverhampton, you're our priority. Big statement, but you really are at the heart of what we do. We'll give you a first class education and support you every step of the way. That starts with providing you with choice. Me. We're experts um, so in the old, the new and the fields that make a difference. Alica, um, it's why the historians, well, engineers and nurses um, of the future choose us. Excellent and in our classrooms are some of the um, best my academics. The Teachers, researchers, yeah, explorers and authors, of each of with their unique um, tale so to tell. Our campuses are pretty cool too, filled with state-of-the-art kit and great spaces to study. But it's not all work. You'll never be sure of places to go, things to do or people to see, because we're bang in the heart of the UK. And when the time um, comes for so you to leave us, you you'll be equipped with the skills you I need to succeed, whatever your ambitions. And that's okay, what makes so, us special. Um, what we do is about long, you um, in 60 seconds. A quick overview of what this presentation is going to look like. Um, so you can see on the slide um, what I'll be talking to you about today. Okay, so um, where is the University of Wolverhampton. Um, so we are based in the West Midlands, so that is in the heart of the UK, right in the centre of England. Um, we have four main campuses at Wolverhampton. So our main campus is obviously based in Wolverhampton, um, which is um, a city um, 20 minutes away from Birmingham. Um, it's also the home um, city of Liam Payne from One Direction. Um, so not sure if any of you are music fans, um, but um, that's our link um, to um, One Direction. Um, so our second campus is the Walsall campus. We are very big on sports at Wolverhampton. 
Um, so we have our specialist sports facilities at our Walsall campus. This includes a high performance centre and also um, home to the British Judo Association Centre of Excellence. So we have the Olympic Great British um, Judo team come and train with us quite regularly. Um, we have a twelve court sports hall, a twenty meter swimming pool, tennis court, sports field, um, and a new floodlit synthetic pitch. And the great thing about our Walsall campus is you get discounted rates as a student to all of these excellent sports facilities. Um, and we have free shuttle buses between each of our campuses. Um, so our third campus is our Telford Innovation Campus. So that is home to our Faculty of Science and Engineering. Um, and we have a new Springfield campus um, which is currently being built. Um, and that will be the biggest um, centre of architecture and built environment in the whole of Europe. Um, Wolverhampton is... Um, very centrally based so there are excellent transport links to um, other key cities so you have Birmingham on your doorstep just 18 minutes away from um, sorry just 18 minutes away on train and then Manchester is 70 minutes and London is 98 minutes away um, I always like to put the European cities on here um, because students like to travel um, to Europe when we have semester breaks um, so I've just given you some timings here um, obviously due to corona we won't be traveling too much at the moment um, okay so here are some key facts about Wolverhampton so at the bottom I've put some logos um, so I don't know how many of you are football fans um, but in the West Midlands there are five main um, cities, five main um, football clubs um, the most recognisable of which is probably Aston Villa. Um, but the orange and black logo, that is the logo for Wolverhampton Wanderers FC. Um, and the Molyneux Stadium is just 10 minutes walk from the Wolverhampton campus. So you've got a massive football stadium um, right next um, to our main campus. Um, there's been massive investment into the University of Wolverhampton, um, so there's been over £250 million pounds, um, since 2015 um, pumped into the university because we care about you, um, so we want to ensure that you're being taught in state-of-the-art facilities. Um, we are very proud of our graduate employability rate, so it's 96% um, and 72% of graduates go on to managerial or professional roles. We are a very global university, um, so we have students from over 130 different countries. Okay, so why do students decide to come and study with us? Um, so one of the reasons is because the majority of our courses are professionally accredited. Um, so either by national or international accrediting bodies. So this includes um, institutions such as the Chartered Institute of Marketing, the Royal Society of Biology, the Royal Society of Chemistry, the Chartered Institute of um, Accountants and so on. Um, so when you go onto our website and you have a look at the courses that we offer, um, you will often see who they are accredited by. Um, we've also achieved a commendation, so that's the highest possible accolade from the Quality Assurance Agency. Um, so they are a little bit like um, Ofsted, so they regulate um, the quality of teaching within uh, universities. Um, and we were given accommodation for our dedication to students' learning opportunities. So we obviously want you to do really well academically, but we want to give you the opportunity to succeed once you graduate as well. Okay, so how do we put our students first? Um, so we've got a range of student support and wellbeing services. This includes access to a personal tutor, mentoring services, um, as well as counselling services. Um, we have a dedicated careers and workplace team who I will talk about a little bit later on. Um, but we have academic writing support as well as English language support. Um, we have our own students union on site um, there's a lot of flexibility so we have a wide range of 
um, student societies. But if you want to set one up, um, you can do that. Somebody very recently set up a Harry Potter society um, and they held a Harry Potter convention just before um, coronavirus came along. Um, we have our own on-site advice centre, so if you have any questions, if you need any help, um, so once you come to the UK, um, if you've got any questions, well, you don't need to go anywhere else, we've got um, trained advisors on-site. Um, so as well as your um, on-campus experience, we invested very heavily in the digital software um, and the um, platform available for remote learning. Um, and we've also got a four million pound um, city campus courtyard development. So you'll see it on this slide here. Um, so right in the middle in the summer, all our students gather here um, and each year we run an international fair where we celebrate students from all across the world. Um, and it's a great day, really popular with students um, and a chance to, to celebrate our students from all across the world. OK, so I'm going to move on to the faculties. We have three main ones. We have the Faculty of Arts, Business and Social Sciences. Um, the Faculty of Education, Health and Wellbeing and the Faculty of Science and Engineering. So each of those faculties are made up of specific institutes and schools. So you can see those here. Um, the main ones for the Faculty of Arts, Business and Social Sciences are the Law School and the Business School, as well as the School of Performing Arts. So they are very popular with students who are applying from the USA um, as well as Latin America. And then with the Faculty of Science and Engineering, we have the School of Pharmacy and the School of Engineering, which again are very popular with students applying from the US. Okay, so I've listed some of our main courses on here. Um, we offer over 400 courses at both undergraduate and postgraduate level. Um, so I can't talk about every single one today, um, but I have listed the main ones there for you. Um, in terms of cyber security, um, we've got an excellent reputation. Um, so our cyber security academics um, have recently been um, Oops, sorry, I think I'm timing out. Can everyone hear me okay? I think I'm back, I think I'm back. I'm so sorry, my Wi-Fi um, is, is timing out, but I think I'm back now. Um, so I was talking about our cybersecurity ac academics um, and how they have um, excellent reputation. So recently they were amongst the top five finalists for the International Cybersecurity Research Award. Um, and our new, um, Centre of Excellence in Cybersecurity is the UK's leading centre of excellence. So it's branded the Cyber Quarter. Um, so there's been over £10 million of investment into our Cyber Quarter. Um, and it allows students to work on real life um, projects. Um, so quite recently, students have worked on um, a project for the West Midlands Police. So they've actually worked to create um, an app um, which helps um, the West Midlands Police converse with students, um, not students, the public, um, where English is not their first language. Um, so students have worked on that um, and it's actually been used in the police force. So we give you real opportunity um, for development. So with the Faculty of Education, Health and Wellbeing, again, I've listed some of my key courses on here. Um, social work and psychology, uh, biomedical science. Um, we have a really comprehensive for portfolio of courses. So if you are interested in this area, I would encourage you to go onto our website and have a look. Um, we will also be running um, further presentations on key courses. Um, so you can always get in touch with us um, and we will send you email updates following today um, on those presentations. So again, I've just given you a snapshot of all our undergraduate courses. Um, I, I'm 
don't have time to mention all of them um, but don't worry if I haven't mentioned a course that you're interested in um, the university has um, a long-standing reputation for delivering um, art and design courses so back in the 1850s um, the first faculty that opened um, was the University of Wolverhampton School of Art so um, I know some of you are interested in the creative um, design industries uh, we offer a lot of courses around um, those areas and again, I've just listed postgraduate. I know the majority of you will be looking at undergraduate courses, uh, but I'm sure some of you will have your full career history planned out um, because you're really organized. Um, so this is just to give you an idea of what you could do after your undergraduate course. Um, so partners and placement. So as I mentioned, um, the university does have um, an excellent reputation for graduate employability. Um, so on here, I've listed just some of the graduate employers that we offer. Um, for the majority of your courses, you can apply to either do a year in industry or you can apply for shorter UK or international based placements. Um, so I've listed some of the employers here, um, but we do have other opportunities. So if you want to do some volunteering, for example, we have opportunities in Chile, South Africa, Nepal and China um, for international students to spend some time um, developing some of those life skills. Our work careers team as well um, offer one-to-one -one support. So if you need support on um, how to write an application form, um, psychometric testing, how to attend um, an assessment centre, um, we can support you with that. Our careers team run regular workshops, so they often invite a lot of these employers on site to talk about their graduate schemes and how you can get ahead. Um, and we also offer tailored one-to-one -one, um, careers guidance as well. Don't worry if you don't want to go into um, a graduate role, if you want to start up your own business. Um, there's a lot of support for students, so maybe you want to do a business management degree with us and then set up your own business. Um, we can help you with that and give you the tools to make a really good start. Okay, on here I've listed the fees um, that we um, that our courses are priced at. So they are very competitively priced. They are at the lower end. Um, so it's our tuition fees are very attractive to international students. They do vary depending on the course that you are looking to study with us. Um, so you will find that healthcare and engineering courses are slightly higher. Um, we do offer a number of scholarships. So all international students um, are offered a £1,000 bursary. So that's automatically applied if you receive an offer to study with us. So you don't need to apply separately. And that's a £1,000 reduction for each year that you study with us. So if it's a three year or a four year program, you get that £1,000 bursary for each year that you study with us. We also have the Lord Paul Scholarship. So this is merit based. Um, so if you are a high achiever, um, it does vary depending on um, where you're applying from and the type of qualification that you have. Um, but generally, you can be awarded up to £2,500. Um, um, so that can be given to you in combination with the £1,000 bursary. So that's quite a big saving in terms of international tuition fees. Um, we do accept federal loans. Um, and there's lots of useful information on our website and how you can start your application. And we also consider the GI Bill as well. Um, like I said earlier, we're very big on sports. Um, so we do offer sports scholarships. And I know some of you asked about those in the question box. These are based around what we call core sports. So if you are a martial arts player, if you are a basketball player, maybe you play hockey um, and so on. But we do recognize other sports. So I know that some of you are keen swimmers. Um, you can get in touch with our um, scholarship team to check your eligibility. Um, so this isn't just um, a financial 
scholarship you also get ongoing physiotherapy and coaching support as well okay so i've just briefly put entry requirements for students from the usa on here um, but i know that there are um, guests here from all over the world um, so don't worry we consider um, a really wide range of applications um, so on the next slide i have listed our international admissions email address but the easiest way to find out the entry requirements from your for your country so say you're applying from mexico if you go onto our website click the mexico tab it will outline um, what you will need to be considered for one of our courses and how do you apply so the first thing that we'd say is go onto our website um, have a look um, at all the courses that we offer um, and then when you're ready to make an application um, you can apply through UCAS so I've just listed the university code here don't worry if you forget this if you download a copy of our international guide or our prospectus um, today it's got all that information in there um, if you don't want to apply through UCAS or um, perhaps you apply through clearing or you're going to apply through an agent, you can apply for free directly through our website. Um, we encourage you to write a good personal statement. So again, we've got lots of information on how to do that on our website and we will be running sessions um, a little bit later on how to do that. Um, so the application process is quite simple, but if you have any questions at all, you can get in touch with us. I've just left you with some quotes. Um, so we welcome students from all across the world um, and it just gives you an idea of how they found um, Wolverhampton. Okay, so um, I always like to end with this um, picture um, because it just gives you an idea of uh, where you can be um, once you've completed your degree, that moment of um, when you, you go up to collect your graduation certificate, this could be you. Um, so like I said, we will be running a number of different presentations. Um, there's lots of ways that you can get in touch with us. So I've left my contact details on here. If there are any school counsellors, because I know there are some in the audience, you can get in touch with me um, directly. Um, but we also know that students are a little bit scared of writing emails or they want an answer really quickly so if you go onto our website we use chattify so if you click on the chattify box you can just type whatever questions you might have and that will come directly through to me and i will type you an answer back so it's a bit like whatsapp and we also use the unibuddy so if you want to speak to an actual student um you can do that that way um and right at the bottom you probably can't see it but it is on your handout and um, we've got a virtual um, open day online so you can have a look at all the facilities for yourself um, so that brings me to the end of my presentation I hope you found it useful um, I am now going to jump to the Q&A session so if you have any questions for the University of Manchester the University of Strathclyde or even Jenna from British Council please pop them in the box um, and we'll start going through them now
Great, thank you so much, Narissa, um, and also to Melissa and Reluca for those presentations. I always feel so inspired after um, hearing the university presentation, so I hope um, everyone in the audience is feeling the same way. Um, I know we're a little bit past the hour, but um, all of our UK reps have agreed to stay on for Q&A, so um, we hope you can join us for as long as you can stay on. We'll be going through some of the questions you submitted in the chat, and I know Lena is still monitoring the chat if you'd like to submit any more questions. But um, I think we'll start with um, maybe this question. We'll start with you, Raluca, and then Melissa and Rissa. If you have anything to add, feel free to chime in. Um, but I saw we had a couple of questions come in around English language requirements and the types of um, tests or certificates students might need. So, for example, um, someone asked if they're studying in an international school, would they need to take an IELTS exam? And another person asked, apart from the IB, would they need any other English, cer English certificates? Um, so, Raluca, where, where would a good place be for students to go to find that information um, about the English level requirements um, they'll need to apply? Um, I think as a general answer, all UK universities have very transparent admission requirements. We all publish them on our website. Um, for the University of Manchester specifically, you will find individual course requirements, so degree requirements on the degree page. We list international qualifications there, so you'll find A-levels and IB entry requirements directly on the course pages. But we also have a dedicated website specifically for English language requirements. Now, I know across universities, obviously, we would have different English language entry requirements. However, I think I can confidently say about um, the University of Manchester and my colleagues here as well that uh, we accept English language from an IB diploma. So that shouldn't be a problem. Just the grades might be a little bit different across universities. So that's something to keep in mind and double check. Great, thanks, Raluca. Um, Melissa and Marissa, did you have anything to add? No, just so um, I just have the same response as Raluca. Um, if you go onto our website, we will list all of our admission entry requirements. If there, if you're doing a combination of qualifications, say you started your education in Chile and then you moved to France, um, just get in touch with our admissions team, and we will be able to check whether or not you can apply for one of our courses yeah just to, just to add the same as well so if if you do have any doubts just to get in touch with us and we can certainly look on a case-by-case -case basis as well for students so absolutely thank you um the next question i'll go to uh you melissa first and then again if um Nurissa and luca if you have any comments we can go to you as well um, but we had several questions come in about um, different types of scholarships so i think students are curious if the universities here offer for example um, sports scholarships scholarships specific for refugee students um, international student scholarships. So it might be great just to hear a little bit from each of you what you know those scholarship opportunities look like. I know you may have mentioned it a little bit in your presentation and where students can go for more information about those scholarships. Yeah, I mean for, for Strathclyde, for my institu institution specifically, we do have different scholarships, different amounts of partial scholarships per faculty. So I guess it's always worth either getting in touch with me or getting in touch with universities and um, recruitment officers just to find out what scholarships are available because some will be faculty specific some might be degree specific and um, i know that some universities do offer sports scholarships as well certainly those institutions that have really good sporting facilities or are known as a sports university will have lots of those opportunities available um, and there's also um schools who will take FAFSA loans and will take will accept other private loans as well. So typically universities will have a finance officer that processes those applications as well. But again, it's always worth getting in touch with the recruitment officers if you're not sure. And, and just to add to that as well, if you are looking at universities' websites, there are a lot of universities have what's called a scholarships database. 
So all of the scholarships should be listed on that, or as well as the, the country web page, there should be a list. Great, thanks. Um, Beluka, um, did you have anything to add? For US attendees, when you're talking to UK universities about funding and scholarships, um, please try not to say financial aid. It confuses us and then we direct you to the FAFSA web pages straight away. It's not terminology that we would use if you're looking for additional funding outside of your student loan. So just keep that in mind. Ask for scholarships. It's a little bit easier for everyone to know what you're looking for. That's a great tip for Luca. Um, and Nerissa, did you have anything to say? It's a really great um, tip actually, Ralika. Um, so I think I covered um, a lot of this question in my actual presentation in terms of support scholarships. But again, if you go onto our website, you can find all of the scholarships that we offer, um, as well as external scholarship schemes that we are part of. Um, the In terms of federal loans and the veteran bill, if you have any questions, I actually am responsible for processing them um, along with one of my colleagues in the international office. Um, so um, if you have any questions at all, you can just get in touch with me. Great, thank you. Um, and the next question, I think uh, I'll start with you, Narissa, and again, our other colleagues can chime in, but um, we had uh, um, several attendees joining us from the EU, and they were curious about um, what fees EU students will be paying for the 2021 year. Um, I know things might be changing. So do you have a recommendation where students just can check for those updates um, as they come out? Yeah, so um, I, th I would say the main place is the university website um, because it depends on which university you're going to be applying for. At the moment, Wolverhampton is currently looking at fees. Um, so they, they tend to change slightly each um, recruitment year. Um, so we don't have a confirmed answer in terms of how much they will be for EU students currently or whether or not they will increase. Um, but we follow on national guidance. Um, and if we do change anything, we will update our website um, or if you've already got in touch with us and you're added to our mailing list, we will send you our email communication. Great. Um, Melissa, did you have anything to add? Or Raluca? Um, it's just to check the university's website. I guess one thing that we should be clear on with Scotland is Scotland's a little bit different in terms of um, in terms of tuition for EU students. So the cur currently the Scottish Government would fund EU students, but that may change what that looks like at the moment. We're not entirely um, certain that's still to be um, confirmed. But again, it's useful if, if you want to know further information or just keep in touch with the recruitment officers at the university in which you're interested in, keep checking the university websites as well. Um, Raluca, anything to add? Uh, no, not really. That's the general answer across okay. the UK sector. Great. Great. Um, so we had a question come in from, it sounds like a, a counselor or advisor. Um, and so Raluca, we'll go to you for this one um, to start. Um, the counselor was asking, um, it sounds like they have a student who may have a predicted IB score and has a conditional offer from the university based on that predicted score. Um, but if a student doesn't make their conditional offer um, requirements, what are the options for the that student? For example, would they be able to get in via a foundation program or would there be other options available to them? Okay, so that's a that's going to be a very long answer for me. <laughs> <laughs> very long winded answer. So um, I think firstly it's important to address the current situation with COVID nineteen and preventing students from getting the scores from IB and the new system in which these are calculated. 
as far as the University of Manchester is concerned, as well as I'm sure my colleagues across the sector as well, um, we are fully aware of that and there are various changes that we have made to our admission policies to account for that. So for students that have applied to enter this year and they are concerned or they've not actually managed to meet their entry requirements, the University of Manchester is quite flexible with that. Um, and it, it is, however, looked at on a case by case basis. So at the moment, we are not changing the offer that we have made a, a student. So the offer stands if the student has not achieved those predicted scores. That's when the conversation starts with our departments and our admissions tutors as well to make sure that they're not disadvantaged by the current situation. So that could mean an academic interview if it's necessary. It could mean a series of other qualifications or if the scores the difference between the predicted scores and the achieved scores is very small, then that might not even be a problem. But again, for us in the current situation is treated on a case by case basis. In general, however, outside of the current situation, we tend not to lower entry requirements um, that have been made in an offer if the student doesn't manage to achieve their to that there are opportunities to apply to the University of Manchester um, and in general opportunities to apply to other universities through clearing as well. So students shouldn't be discouraged and they should keep in mind that there is the clearing process. Again, very complicated, something to research into. Um, however, it might not necessarily be the degree that they were targeting. However, um, as uh, universities go into clearing, there will be plenty of other courses and degrees that they can look at where their scores might be very suitable for what they're looking for. University of Manchester has occasionally courses in clearing as well, so we'll be more than happy to reevaluate applications in that case. Great. And for the um, counselor asking, I, I believe there should be a lot of information about clearing, which um, Reluca is talking about on the UCAS website as well. Um, Melissa and Nerissa, did you have anything to add? I love there? how our names rhyme. Um, I, I, I hardly yes. come across uh, someone with a similar <laughs> sounding name. Um, so, no, that was an excellent answer from Ralika. She covered all the main points. Um, in terms of Wolverhampton, one thing that I would say is if you um, slightly miss your grades of a conditional offer, if there is space on a similar course um, where your where you meet the entry requirements of that course with your current grades. Sorry, I've said that in a really complicated way. Um, so okay, so say you're predicted um, a, a GP. So your your conditional court your conditional offer is um, dependent on you achieving a GPA score of 2.7 um, and you achieve 2.65 um, and that is enough for you to gain entry um, to a similar course then our admissions team will offer you that as an alternative but generally if you don't meet the entry requirements for your course um, like Ralika said we will not lower the entry requirements because it forms part of your offer. Great. Um, so I think we might have time for one more question um, and I know there are a lot of great questions that unfortunately we might not make it to during this session um, but I know that SRT will be providing everyone with um, the email addresses of the reps on the session so you can reach out to them personally um, for any question that we weren't able to get to but one of the questions that came through um, was about top tips for the personal statement um, as part of the application to a UK university. Um, the question that came through was specifically about um, tips for the personal statement when applying for medicine, but I think it might be great for everyone on the call just to hear your top tip in general um, when thinking about writing the personal statement. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned this in the intro, but the personal statement, if you are applying through UCAS, um, that would be part of your application in UCAS. Um, so I wondered, Melissa, could we start with you? And then um, we can go um, to Ruka and then Narissa um, with what your top tip would be for students thinking about writing a personal statement for a UK university. Yeah. Thanks, Jenna. I love a personal statement question. <laughs> 
I think with the personal statement, if you are applying through UCAS, um, you have to be concise and you have to be concise because you have a word limit on that. So I think you can only write up to 40 lines or 4,000 characters, which isn't a lot really when you think about it. So I, I generally say to students is, write a list, do your preparation beforehand. We want to know about your personal attributes and your skill set. We already know about your academics because you're already putting that on your application. You'll already be um, sending us your results. So when you are writing your personal statement, we want to know that you are a good candidate for the course and a good candidate for the university. Also that you've done your research as well, that you, you have an idea, you know what university life is going to entail or you have a sense of what you want to do with your degree afterwards and think about the things that you you already do at high school for instance so if you're part of a club you don't have to mention that you're part of you know cheerleading and you're part of hockey and you're part of soccer and whatever but again think of that skill set think of the qualities that that brings you so if you are part of a club then you could talk about um teamwork for instance and then how that how that transfers to university life so you could say that you're aware of like project work as well and that you would be really good at that because you already have experience of teamwork if you if you have a part-time job for instance the independence that that gives you and you're aware that university life requires um independent study study for instance so we're, we're looking at a sense of maturity within that we're looking at your skill set um, i don't know if, if um Narissa and, and Raluca, if you want to come in and um, give your some of your experience and opinions on the personal statement as well and what you're looking for. Oh, yeah, no, Raluca, go ahead. <laughs> um, I think I um, absolutely agree with Melissa when it comes to her personal statement. I think um, one of the things that I do see sometimes and I especially for students who are not used to the UCAS application system just like my colleagues have said um, it's one personal statement to all of your choices so do make sure that you don't mention very specific things about one particular university or another there is nothing that we kind of dislike more than to read about how wonderful another university is so <laughs> um, please try not to do that in terms of Manchester in particular, again, similar to what Melissa said, it's important for us to know that why you want to do the course, why you think you'd be good at that course and anything that would recommend you, especially academic achievements towards that course. Um, and I know the question was specifically geared at medicine, but that's a very long and complicated answer. So we do have a medical school. Please email me and I'd be happy to walk you through the process in the personal statement for that. I, I don't have anything to add further. I think that was an excellent um, answer from um, Melissa. You've broken it down and Ralik has given my top tip as well. Um, so tend not to um, include the name of the specific university, even though you might really, really, really want to go to Manchester and study medicine at Manchester. You might have applied for biomedical science at Strathclyde as a backup. Um, so I'm sure Strathclyde don't want to um, see um, that they are the backup choice. So just try and avoid that um, and make it quite general, but some excellent tips there from uh, Melissa. One final thing that I would add to that is if you do go on the UCAS website, there are some really good tips on writing the personal statement as well. So make sure that you avail of those resources. They're really good. Those are all some fantastic tips um, and I hope um, really useful for everyone watching. Um, I think we will uh, wrap up the Q&A at this point, but we do want to say thank you so much for those fantastic questions. And we do hope that you will get in touch um, with the university representatives with any follow-up questions that you have. Um, and on behalf of everyone, um, all the presenters on the webinar today, I do want to say thank you so much for joining us and we hope we will see you in the UK. Um, and Lena, I don't know if um, you'll come on to close the, close the How webinar. How will I not say goodbye to our <laughs> amazing 
amazing presenting tonight. I've been really enjoying your presentations, lady. Thank you, Jenna, so much for supporting us and moderating. You've been fabulous. And uh, Raluca, Melissa, Nerissa, your advice was great. Uh, there were a few questions we couldn't finish answering. Uh, I will use the last video with which we will say goodbye to uh, just share uh, some of the specific questions asked for Manchester. And then if you have any questions for Strathclyde or, or Wolverhampton or to Jen from British Council, we have shared their contact details. So just, you know, get in touch with them uh, whenever you want, develop your questions. Maybe check the video once again that we will share with you of this webinar. Maybe your question was already answered. And uh, with this, I will wish everyone a good evening and thank you so much uh, for joining us from all over the world. You've been an amazing audience. As always, I've seen a lot of faces, um, not for the first time. So uh, thank you for coming again tonight and have a wonderful evening. Stay curious and of course, stay safe. Goodbye for now. <laughs>